So if you're a woman over 40, the pelvic floor muscles are underrated. It is so important for women to understand the importance of the pelvic floor and also what exercises are important to be doing, especially if you're in that perimenopause to menopausal stage. So today we're gonna to talk through my five essential exercises that all women should be doing to really boost their health and prevent issues in the long run. My name is Dr. Dawn Andalone. I'm a pelvic floor specialist and a women's health physical therapist. And I've helped thousands of women really overcome pelvic floor issues, back pain, hip pain. And today we're gonna to talk about the pelvic floor, why it's important. We're gonna talk through five essential exercises that every woman should be doing to help their health in the long run. Now, why is the pelvic floor muscles really important? Well, think of it like a trampoline. So your muscles have to recoil when they need that more support around your pelvic organs and your hips and your lower back and sacrum. And then they also have to lengthen and relax, especially if you are going to the bathroom and they have to be able to do both and they provide support that's as much as necessary, but as little as possible. We don't wanna walk around tightening those pelvic floor muscles all the time and pulling in our abs and tucking our butt under and sucking everything in. That can also create issues. So the pelvic floor muscles, they do support your pelvic organs. They help with also bowel and bladder function. They help with being intimate with your partner and having a pleasurable sexual experience. And they also give you that support. So when you're walking, running, jumping, squatting, it provides that support around the bottom part of your pelvis. It is so important. And as you reach this perimenopause to menopausal stage, hormones shift, it does affect our vaginal wall strength and the stability of the muscles around there. So it can be very important to focus on the pelvic floor, especially when you're doing uh, your fitness routine and how you can work that in. And I'm not just talking about doing Kegels and tightening those muscles all the time. So let's get started. So the first one I mentioned is not just about Kegel exercises, but we're gonna talk about a reverse Kegel. And what does that even mean? Well, I showed you on this model here, if we think of contracting and you're pulling in, thinking of closing the vaginal opening. So if you, I'll use an analogy that I use a lot with my clients. If you have a marble or a blueberry there, you're trying to pull it in and lift it up a little bit. And when you do that, you provide that contraction and support. Now, Women are told to do Kegel exercises as they age because it can help bladder issues. Well, that's not always the case because for many women, especially if you spend a lot of time sitting or you're under a lot of stress, you don't even realize that you're tensing those muscles and that can create more of an issue. So we want to think about a reverse Kegel, meaning we're not gonna bear down and push out and do the opposite, but we're gonna think of just relaxing those muscles like a flower opening up. And how do we do that? Well, we can do it with some deep breathing exercises. So I'm gonna have you go on your back with your knees bent, and I'll talk you through what that looks like. So I'm gonna place my hands on my lower abdominal region, and I'm gonna imagine that vaginal opening there. As I take a deep inhale, I'm gonna imagine it just dropping and letting go. Like I mentioned, the flower opening up. If you can think about that with the muscles between your legs as you take a big inhale. And then as you exhale, you maintain that release there. You're not tensing and tightening. But we're going to do five to ten good deep breaths. So we're imagining the reverse of tightening and doing a Kegel. You're going to think of letting go instead. Next, after you've done 10 of those, we're gonna add the contraction on the exhale. So we inhale through your nose. You imagine opening up those uh, pelvic muscles. And then as you exhale, you're gonna imagine pulling in and coming up, lifting that blueberry or lifting that marble. 
Don't think of tightening your glutes and your butt muscles or your abs at the same time. Think of those muscles just right between the legs. So inhale, they stay released, and then exhale. We're gonna draw those muscles in and up. Sometimes it helps to do this sitting up as well. Um, even uh, if you're sitting and you roll a washcloth or something right between your legs, you can kind of get that feedback of what your muscles are doing. But it is so important to work on the relaxation por portion. We call that a reverse Kegel. So that is the first exercise. You can do this daily about 10 times, no more than that, but you're just teaching your brain what it feels like to let it go and then also contract. And you may notice that when you're sitting in the car or you're doing something that your, your brain is noticing, hey, I'm holding those muscles tight all the time. So just take a deep breath and think of letting them go. That can do a lot more benefit for you, for your pelvic floor. Okay, the next exercise, I have a ball here. You can use a pillow or something that you can squish with your knees. So the next one's a bridge pose, and we're gonna take the ball or the pillow in between our knees. I'm gonna take an inhale, and then as I exhale, I'm gonna think of drawing those muscles in and up like I did before on my exhale, and I'm gonna give that ball a little squeeze at the same time. And then I inhale, I let everything go, including my glutes, my pelvic floor muscles release, and my inner thighs. And then I'm gonna exhale, squeeze, and think of pulling that blueberry or marble straight up toward your navel and tightening the pelvic floor and the lower abs. Inhale, it's just as important to let them go. And then exhale, draw it in and lift it up. So I'm gonna do 10 of these as well. This will help strengthen through the core and the pelvic floor. So while I'm already on here on the floor, we're gonna do what's called a dead bug exercise. So in this position, I have my knees up in a 90 degree position. We call this tabletop in Pilates. And then my arms are up toward the ceiling. I'm going to extend my opposite arm and leg out. And then I'm gonna bring it back together. And then extend out on your exhale. Inhale back in, exhale, and out. Now, what you want to do here is imagine you're drawing those pelvic floor muscles and your lower abs, pulling in those muscles every time you extend one arm and leg. This will keep the trunk muscles and the pelvic floor muscles working when you have to have that stability of going out in a longer lever through your arm and leg. So exhale out, inhale it in, and you tighten those muscles on your exhale out. Same thing, do about 10 times each side. If that is difficult for you, you can just start with the legs or just start with the arms and just get the breath down from there, okay? Okay, the next exercise is a banded hip rotation. If you don't have a band, this would be a good idea to get one. So you can use a loop or you can use a longer band like I have. And you don't want it to be too much tension that you can't pull it apart, but enough that it's giving you a little bit of resistance. So I have more of like a medium strength band right now. And you're gonna go on your stomach and then you're gonna keep your knees bent at a 90 degree angle. I'm gonna pull my abdominals and my pelvic floor in just about 25%. And then from there, I'm gonna separate my ankles, but not my knees. As I exhale, I'm drawing my navel in toward my spine and I'm pressing out and away. Inhale it in, exhale it out. You can rest your head down as well with this. But those that works on those deeper pelvic floor muscles when you're going in internal and external rotation. You can do about 10 to 12 of those as well. Okay, the last exercise that we have here is a squat. Now, we do squats all the time, getting on and off the toilet, in and out of the car, up and down from a chair. 
So I want you to think about your pelvic floor muscles as you're doing a squat. I'm not going to use weight today, but you can use some weight in front of your chest if that also can make this exercise a little more difficult. So when we're thinking of the core and the pelvic floor, we're going to inhale as we squat and then exhale, draw those muscles from the vaginal opening, thinking of pulling that marble or blueberry in and up on your way up with your exhale. Inhale it down, exhale it up. Inhale it down, exhale it up. 10 to 12 times of that doing a pelvic floor squat. So you are using more muscle groups with this last exercise, but it is a very functional exercise because we are squatting a lot throughout the day. So these five essential pelvic floor exercises, like I mentioned, any woman over 40 should be doing these. And if you're struggling or this is not comfortable to you, make sure you check in with your medical provider. And even seeing a pelvic floor therapist can be very beneficial if you are having symptoms of pain, pressure, heaviness, or incontinence, anything that is uncomfortable, then they can assess you and give you the right treatment strategy. So I hope you learned something from this video. If you haven't already hit subscribe, I release new videos every week and I would love for you to watch more about helping your body as you feel more active and mobile and do it in a more holistic manner. So thanks so much for watching.